Hi and welcome back techies. I am Sambhav here. This is the second part of the date function and if you have not seen my previous videos, please don't forget to check them out. Also subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates on my upcoming videos. So let's get started. So in today's session we are going to talk about three new functions which is date part, time part and date tool. Very very easy yet very very important. So uh, this is a list of date functions which I have given you and in the previous uh, video we have already discussed about the date function today time and date time. In fact in today's practical we will use the date time uh, uh, function as well and if you have not if you're not aware of the date time function please go ahead and check my previous video. So in today's session we will focus mostly on the date part time part and the date joule function. So time part was a function which I have not specified earlier but I have added it because it is really very important. So the definition of the date part says that it extracts the date part of the SAS date time value as a date value. That means if you are given a date and a time value so what date part will do is it will extract the date portion and it will drop the time part of it. That is what a date part will do. Uh, syntax variable name which is mainly used to store the result of the date part function and here I have specified the date time which you want to extract. So here if you notice the date part will actually extract the date part of it. Similarly talking about the time part. So the time part extracts the time portion from the SAS date value as a time value and the time which SAS returns is in the form of hours, minutes and second. And syntax is again very much similar to the previous uh, function which is date part. So variable name to store the result and we will have the time part. So this time the time part will actually extract the time part from the SAS date time value. And the time will be in the form of in the order of hours, minutes and seconds. So let's do some practical to understand these two functions better. So let's create a data set data. Oh sorry data and let me give a data set name called as date underscore one and let's give a date value uh, let's say a is equal to so date time so I will not have to actually specify any date and time here because by using this date time function SAS will actually print the current date and time right now let's try to print the rest result uh, let me use the run statement and prop print data is equal to date underscore one run. So we are just going to check what date type SAS is returning. So uh, as you can see SAS has returned the current date time value which is a little difficult for us to understand at this point of time. So what we will do is we will use a format statement right. So we will format A as date time and we will give it a width of 16 dot right now the reason why I'm giving 16 dot is because uh, SAS will give me the date let's say for example today's date let's say uh, 0 1 March MAR so this makes 5 1 2 3 4 5 and the year as 90 and then a colon and it will specify the time in the form of hour minute and second so the R let it be it will let it be 0 0 0 so this is a format so if you count total it becomes 16 so 2 plus 3 5 plus 2 7 and there are 3 colons and then 2 7 plus 2 9 plus 2 11 plus 2 13 and the 3 columns makes it 16 so that is why I have given this as date time 16 so let's execute and check whether we have got the correct date Yes, so the date is 1st of March 2019 and 005950, right? Now, let's try to extract the date and the time part. So let it be result1 and let me use the function date part, right, of the value A because that is my input value. Similarly, let's create another variable R2 which will, act, uh, which will store the result of the time part time part of a right uh, we will also use format to uh, 
format the result r1 that is the date part and the time part so we will use format statement for r1 and we will use it as date 9 dot now the reason why i'm using 9 dot is because i would like to get the date in the form of let's say 01 march and 2019 right so you see two characters plus 35 plus 49 right so let me comment this portion right and i will also use another format to format the result to which is in the form of time so r2 and let it be time and let it be 8 dot now the reason here why i'm using 8 dot is because i will be getting the uh, time as hours minutes and seconds right uh, guys i could have written this format statement as a single statement i don't have to write i uh, there was no need for me to write three statements the reason i have written three statement is because i just wanted to give an explanation of the formats why i'm using this particular format otherwise i could have used just one format statement format 8 date 16 and continuation of it r1 date 9 and r2 timeline the only reason why i have written three format statement is so that i could actually explain it to you why we are using the date 9 dot time 8 dot and date time 16 dot so let's execute this piece of code to see the result so yes we have got it so this was an input value so sas has taken as this value and now sas has extracted the date result one is nothing but the result of the date part so sas has actually extracted the date part from the given date time value and here SAS has actually extracted the time part from the given date time value. So this is how your date part and the time part function works. Now the next function which we are going to discuss is date joule. It actually returns the SAS, it returns the SAS date value when the given Julian date is in the form of yyddd or yyyddd format. Now, the reason why I have given two formats, I'm going to explain it to you right away. Now, see, the Julian dates are actually not the way what we are reading, Gregorian date calendar, which you follow, basically. We are not, it is a little different from that. For example, let's say if I give date is equal to date Jule of 18365. Now, the Julian date, what it reads is, it will take the first two letters, first two numbers, digits, that is 18, which it will consider it as a year 18 and 365 what julian calendar does is it actually counts the number of days from the first of jan and it represents the date value so for example as we know that in a year there are 365 days so which will actually represent 31st december right so in one year there are 365 days so we are actually specifying 365th day of the year 2018 365th day for the year 2018 so it will give me the value 31st of December 2018 now uh, there can be another format which I have specified here which is yyyyyddd it is only to give let's say sometimes we can give the date in the complete form 2018 here it was 18 alone so here you can also specify in the form of 2018 which is again the year and it is 365 which again counts the days in that year so that will be 31st december 2018 so 365 means 365th day in the year 2018 so uh, let's do a practical to understand this as well so let's say date julian underscore one and let me give few dates let's say p is equal to one eight three six Five, which we have taken uh, in my example right and uh, then we will have Q is equal to let's take the full date 2018 and again we will represent 365 right uh, let's take another date R is equal to uh, let's try to represent January 1st of January 2019 so I am giving 19 and then I have to represent Jan, which is the first day of the year. So 0, 0, 1, right? And now let's give result 1 is equal to date June of P, right? Uh, let me just copy this line so that it will help me 
saving some time and let it be q and r3 is equal to date joule of r right uh, we will also have to use the format statement so that you know we get the result in a desired way so let's say format and we will format uh, r1 r2 r3 r1 r2 r3 like i said that in the previous program that uh, here the reason why i have used three format statement is just for the explanation i could have just used a single format statement what i'm going to do here a single format statement i'm going to format all the three dates in the same form which is let it be date 9 dot so now you know the reason why i'm using 9 dot because i want the date in this particular format right now let's execute this piece of code run run data is equal to julian underscore one run now let's execute this piece of code to get the result and you see so this was a p value 18 18,365 which actually represents 31st of December 2018 and this was in the form of YYY3 and DDD right I hope you remember that so I was talking about this YYY and YYY which is for the four Y's for to represent the year and three D's to represent the date and then this is the first of Jan because here I have represented 19001 2019 and this is the first day of the year which is 1st of Jan 2019 right I hope you have enjoyed learning from this session and if you have any questions please feel free to ask me in the comment section please don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon thank you very much for your time and patience guys and you have a wonderful day ahead